Okay, so now we're going to talk, we're going to continue talking about measuring outcomes, and we're going to talk specifically now about two sp uh, special cases of incidents, attack rates and case fatality rates. So let's first talk about attack rates. So attack rates usually are connected with some sort of infectious disease, and these this is expressed as a proportion, so just like other incidences, it's uh, the number of people who uh, new cases or the number of people who get sick over the number of people at risk. And as with other uh, incidents, we need to have a time frame. And this isn't always uh, specified, but it, it's implied that it's the length of time that this epidemic is uh, happening. So let's take, for example, an incidence of a cruise. This is a nice cruise, or maybe they're going to Alaska, wherever, and you have, um, let's say, 500 people on the cruise ship. Now, some of these 500 people from the cruise ship ate some food that tasted bad, and they ended up getting uh, bad diarrhea. So let's say that 100 of the people got diarrhea, which means that there are 400 people who are just fine. So we get 100 over 500, which is one-fifth, which is equivalent to 20%. So that's our attack rate for the length of the duration of the epidemic. Now, how does this help us? Well, you could actually use this to try and figure out who is, you know, what maybe got these people sick. So maybe it was the food, and you suspect it's the food. Was it the chicken, the potato salad, the deviled eggs, or was it the fish? And so now you can actually uh, calculate attack rates for each one of these things. And so you would your numerator would be the number of people who got sick that ate chicken, and your denominator will be the number of people at risk, so that means all the people who ate chicken. So your numerator for the potato salad would be the number, pe number of people who ate potato salad who got sick over all the people who ate potato salad. Similarly, you could do the same for these. And I'm going to make up some numbers. And so clearly you can see here that the deviled eggs is the winner. It's got the highest attack rate, so it's probably the deviled eggs that were the ones that were spoiled. Now, of course, there are some people who ate these other things that got sick because there's, you know, there's interrelationships. Maybe, maybe this guy who ate fish also ate some deviled eggs, or maybe the guy who ate fish uh, shook hands with the person who ate deviled eggs, and that person didn't wash their hands after going to the bathroom, so now this person is sick, whatever. But you can see here that certainly that the attack rate for the deviled eggs is much higher. Now let's talk about case fatality rates. And this is, again, another special uh, kind of incidence. But, uh, but the, the name actually tells you a lot about what's going on here. So we're looking at the number of cases... Uh, and how many of those people die. So let's put up our familiar uh, equation for incidence, which was the number of new cases over the number of people at risk, and of course we always have a time frame. And much like we look with our attack rates, the time frame sometimes isn't overtly specified, it's kind of just implied as the duration of the disease, however long the, di the disease is. So in this case, the, uh, the number of new cases, the number of new uh, things that we're seeing is deaths. And the number of people who are at risk are anybody who has the, the, the disease. So that's how you get this. You say case fatality rates. So let's draw the picture that we had in, in our previous video where we represent someone's disease state with the little O for onset, and this is how long they have the disease, and then this is when they die. So I added a few more people in here, so let's say this was the onset of cancer, and this guy just continued to live. He Maybe he was on some great new chemotherapy regimen, and he lived, and this one uh, didn't, didn't live. This one, unfortunately, had probably a very aggressive cancer and ended up dying, but all of these ones lived. So let's count now. So how many deaths do we have? What are the number of new cases? We have one, two, three. And how many people were at risk of dying from this cancer, from this disease? Well, it's all of these here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So eight people at risk, and then three, this works out to three-eighths, which is 0 0.375 or 37.5%. So this is how we measure the case fatality rate, which is a special case of incidence. So to illustrate this point, here's a table I found online about uh, case fatality rates in AIDS. So this first column obviously represents the year. This is the number of AIDS cases. This is the number of deaths. This is the cumulative AIDS cases. So you can see it's going to grow with time. And then the cumulative AIDS deaths is going to grow here. This is the AIDS prevalence. And then we have the case fatality rate over here. And so let's, uh, so we can use this actually to, to see what happens. And as time goes by, you can see that our case fatality rate is dropping, right? We went from a case fatality rate in 1981 of 75% almost. Look, it peaked over here at 86, 87%. But since then, we've been steadily dropping. Now we're down to a case fatality rate of 3.9%. So we could use this case fatality rate to compare across the years. We can also use it to compare against uh, geographical areas. So here's an article from AIDS 2012. I just looked it up real quickly. And it looks at the HIV case fatality rate as well. And it's saying that the overall HIV case fatality rate was 20.6 per thousand person years, right? But they looked at it and they compared it ag across states. So if you lived in Idaho, you had a case fatality rate of about 9.6, and if you lived in Mississippi, it was much higher. It was 32.9, so you can see that there is a, there is a significant difference across states, uh, even after they adjusted for race and ethnicity. So we can use case fatality rates also to compare uh, geographically, as we did uh, before. We also looked at it across time. Okay. That's it for this video. Talk to you later. Bye.